Hello, and today we will be talking about diabetes medications. As you know, diabetes is a very prevalent disease state in the United States, and there are plenty of different medications out there to help treat diabetes. So what I plan on doing is breaking down each drug class involved with diabetes and just emphasizing on some key points that you should remember with some of the different drug classes. So without further ado, let's begin. So as you can see, there are many different medication classes. Biguanides, sulfonylureas, DPP-4 inhibitors, the list goes on and on. But in general, these are all the different types of drug classes that can help treat diabetes. Now that first drug class at the top right here, biguanide, um, the only drug in this class is called metformin, and metformin is actually a first-line agent that should be used to treat anyone, especially with type 2 diabetes. Type 1, of course, will be insulin, but for type 2 diabetics, it's a first-line treatment. Let's start with metformin. Metformin, also known as the sensitizer, it's known as the sensitizer because it helps increase um, your muscle and tissue response to insulin so that your body can use the, utilize the insulin to help reduce your sugar levels or glucose levels. So what it does is ideally metformin actually helps decrease glucose production in the liver. One important thing about this medication, it will not cause hypoglycemia. So you never have to worry about that with metformin. Metformin is also really great in obese patients. And ideally when you start metformin, an initial dose would be about starting at 500 milligrams. But the maximum clinical dose that's effective for metformin is about 2,000 milligrams daily. Anything above that doesn't have as much of a great clinical benefit. Also, metformin is really great for people who might have really high um, lipids or anything like that. So it's overall just a really great drug. And plus, it's the, one of the most affordable diabetes medications out there. Now, some important um, adverse drug reactions to remember about this is that lactic acidosis can happen. Um, this is rare, but it is prominently seen if someone has renal impairment. An accumulation of metformin could lead to lactic acidosis. This is something one should be careful of. I will go into the new renal dose adjustments for metformin shortly. Um, but moreover, diarrhea is also something that is prevalent with this drug, so it's recommended to counsel patients to make sure they take it with food just to avoid that side effect of diarrhea. Also, you will see some vit vitamin B12 deficiency. Um, so people who are on metformin, especially for long term, should definitely consider um, some kind of multivitamin that will supplement vitamin B12 as they will become deficient in it. Also, weight loss is, you will see weight loss with this drug, so this is definitely, like I said, great for obese patients. And then some have complained about metallic taste with metformin. Now, with the new renal adjustments, now, in the past, they used to focus on creatinine clearance, but now they focus on um, GFR from the MDRD equation. And metformin is actually contraindicated if you're um, GFR is less than 30, and they do not recommend it if it's between 30 to 45. Now we will get into the sulfonylureas. These are, all, these are known as the secretors. So what they do is they actually work like insulin and help secrete insulin from the body. The drugs that are, that are in this class are glyburide, glipizide, and glymburide. One very important thing to always remember about these medications is that they can cause hypoglycemia. So this has to be monitored in patients and then counseling them of what to do when their blood sugars get too low. So usually below 70 milligrams per deciliter. Now, one thing about this drug class, it's actually been shown that their efficacy diminish after five years of use. So this is one thing that um, providers should keep in mind if they notice that blood sugars are not controlled and they've been on something like glyburide for a long time. Also, what's nice about this drug is that it is affordable like metformin. Some ADRs to watch out for is definitely weight gain, low blood sugar, and rash. Then we have the thiazolidinones, which I also like to call the TZDs. These are also known as sensitizers, so they do help um, sensitize the cells in your body to take in insulin and utilize it. The drugs that fall in this class are pioglitazone and rosiglitazone. Now, one thing about these drugs is that they actually take a while to work. 
So you will actually see the maximum clinical benefit from a TCD at about four months of treatment with this medication. So one should definitely keep that in mind. This drug, one thing to remember about it is that it's contraindicated in heart failure patients and any of those who have liver disease. And one bad thing about it is that it's really expensive. So this, this should definitely be kept in mind. Some ADRs to watch out for fluid retention and weight gain. Hence, this is, this is the reason why it is contraindicated in heart failure patients, as we do want to reduce any form of fluid retention. It's also known to cause hepatotoxicity, so one should watch out for that and most likely monitor any um, liver function enzymes and tests. And then it's also been shown to cause bone loss in females. So any females undergoing who have osteopenia or osteoporosis, this is definitely not a preferred treatment, probably not even recommended. And there's also been some incidences of bladder cancer with TZDs. Now we're getting to the megalitinides. Um, these are also known as the secretors, so they also help secrete insulin. So again, you want to be careful of hypoglycemia. It does have some hypoglycemia, but it's not as bad as the sulfonylureas. Um, the drugs that fall in this class are repaglinide and naglinide. Now, these drugs have a very short duration of action, so you want to think about adherence when it comes to this medication. This is something that will require multiple dosing throughout the day. Um, it's something that one should take before they eat, and um, this could actually be beneficial for those who don't really have a very consistent schedule, like maybe their schedule is very erratic. So um, they can take this whenever they're about to eat, so they remember. But one thing about this is that it is expensive. Some ADRs to watch out for are weight gain, hypoglycemia, um, incidences of diarrhea, some muscle pain, and also upper respiratory tract infections. Then we have the DPP-4 inhibitors. I also, this is a really great class of drugs to also help with diabetes, kind of like metformin. Um, the drugs that fall in this class are cytogliptin, linagliptin, saxagliptin, and alogliptin. Now, one thing about this drug class, you usually have to adjust for renal impairment, so always watch out for the, um, a patient's creatinine clearance, but there is one drug in this class that you don't have to um, adjust for renal impairment, and that is Trigenta, also known as linogliptin. So that is awesome with that drug. Um, this drug is great for losing weight as well, so great for obese patients, but it does have a high cost, so why don't you keep that in mind. Some ADRs with this medication is that it can cause pancreatitis. So if you do have pancreatitis, it's contraindicated to use this medication. Also, it can cause headache and upper respiratory tract infections. Then we have the GLP-1 agonists. Uh, the drugs that fall in this class are liraglutide, exenatide, and dulaglutide. Now, one thing about this drug, it's an injectable. So a patient has to be comfortable injecting this, especially if they have type 2 diabetes. Um, so that's one thing that you would have to ask a patient. Now, this drug is actually recommended in obese patients, and um, it helps them lose weight. So that's one thing that's awesome about the GLP-1 agonist. Now, there has been, in studies, they actually found some thyroid cancers in mice. So it's actually contraindicated to use this medication if you have any form of personal or family history to thyroid cancer, you cannot use this medication. And one thing about it is that it's really expensive. So again, you want to watch out for pancreatitis, thyroid cancer, and at nausea and vomiting have been reported. Then we have the amylin agonist. Um, the only drug that falls in this class is called pramlitide. This is also another injectable. And this is a drug that you usually use as an adjunct. So you usually add it to another diabetes medication you're on. And um, there's a black box warning on this. It's been, there's been incidences of hypoglycemia when you use it with insulin concurrently. So you want to be careful of that. But one thing about this drug, it actually helps reduce insulin use. So if someone wants to cut down on the amount of insulin they use, they could also use this drug. Um, it is contraindicated if you have gastroparesis, and it's very expensive. Some ADRs from this drug include nausea, vomiting, uh, headache, and anorexia. Then we have the SGLT2 inhibitors. So these are awesome. 
Um, the drugs that fall in this class are empaglyphosone, canaglyphosone, and dapaglyphosone. So how these drugs work is that it works in the kidney and helps prevent the reabsorption of glucose in the kidney so that it doesn't re-enter your bloodstream. So definitely one thing, because it works in the kidney, it's contraindicated if you have severe renal impairment. And some obviously, obviously some ADRs you will see with this is UTIs, mainly because you have a concentration of glucose now in your kidneys. So you want to be careful of urinary tract infections, yeast infections, also low blood pressure and um, dehydration. So it's important that you stay hydrated when you're on this medication. Now, one thing that's awesome, from a particular trial with empaglyphosone, it actually showed reduced mortality and hospitalization rates in heart failure patients. So this is definitely one drug to consider um, if in a heart failure patient who has uncontrolled diabetes. Then we have the alpha glucosidase inhibitors. Um, the drug that falls in this class is called acarbose. And how it works is that it prevents or actually delays absorption of glucose in your intestines. So one thing is that it is contraindicated if you have inflammatory bowel disease and you have to take it before each meal. This drug has not been shown to be very tolerated well with patients. So you want to keep that in mind, especially if a patient's not really good with adherence or compliance. Now, some ADRs that you will find with this is that since it's working at the intestines, um, there's been reports of bloating, diarrhea, and a lot of abdominal discomfort. Then we have bromocryptine. So this one's this one's kind of different from all the other drug classes. How it works is that it stimulates your dopamine receptors. Um, it's believed that if you help stimulate some of your dopamine receptors in the morning, it can actually help control your glucose levels throughout the day. So um, this is a drug that you should take within two hours of waking up, and it should also be taken with food. So obviously, because it stimulates dopamine receptors, you're going to see a lot of different ADRs. Um, these include hallucinations, low blood pressure, vision problems, shortness of breath, and swelling in the feet. Then we have colcevolam. So how this drug works is that it helps sequester bile acids in your body. So this is something you should take with food. But the thing is, again, you have to worry about adherence with this because multiple dosing is required with this. Usually uh, patients have to take three tablets twice a day, so a total of six tablets in one day. Um, it's contraindicated if you have very high triglyceride levels. Usually if it's above 500, they don't recommend this. And it's also important that you take this with liquid just to stay hydrated. Some ADRs include headache, constipation, and muscle, muscle pain. And that is all I have. So that was just a brief overview of all the different diabetes medications um, that are non-insulin to help um, reduce sugar levels. Um, as you can see, there's unique components to each medication. I hope um, a lot of you found this helpful and educational. Please, if you like this video, um, hit the thumbs up button down below and also subscribe if you'd love to see more videos. And also don't forget to follow me at MissRxGeek. Thanks.